we're certainly grateful as always that God has blessed us again and we can use this virtual platform to come together and certainly in prayer and uh, and talking to our God. Uh, started um, last week in a Bible study and uh, we started um, examining some descriptions of the Christian life and uh, Last week, uh, we began talking about uh, these different analogies or metaphors uh, that 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 the scriptures gives us in relation to as, as it is to our Christian life. And and when we see these metaphors uh, in scripture, how can how can we apply these metaphors uh, to help us better in our Christian life as we seek to live it out in this world? And uh, we see that uh, we mentioned last week that, that the Apostle Paul uh, uh, used a, a metaphor in uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3 and 4, that of, of a soldier. And then how, as Paul was talking to Timothy, of course, as being uh, a soldier and suffering along with him uh, in, in the ministry, Paul, and that uh, we were certainly encouraged uh, that uh, we can suffer along as Timothy because God has called us through Christ and we want to please Christ in everything that we do. So since Christ has pleased us, uh, excuse me, since like Christ has called us, um, then we certainly do want to seek to please him. And it's certainly we mentioned certainly that in pleasing Christ, who is our commanding officer, we will certainly displease others. So as soldiers in the army of the Lord, uh, we certainly want to please Christ who has called us. And so we looked at the uh, metaphor of soldier last week. And this this um, this this Tuesday, we want to look at another metaphor uh, that uh, Paul uses in the description of the Christian life. And that is of an athlete, of an athlete and of an athlete. Again, we'll call your proper attention as you turn to uh, 2 Timothy at chapter number 2, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 5. And again, um, we do understand uh, that uh, Paul is writing this uh, from a Roman jail cell. And certainly, he's not going to be released this letter that he's writing to Timothy, the second letter. And so he is certainly wanting to encourage um, Timothy in the faith as he is the pastor of the Ephesian church. Um, so, and he wants to encourage Timothy before he dies. And this letter certainly will, I believe, and did encourage Timothy. And so again, so the metaphor we want to look at tonight is that of an athlete. And that's taken from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5. I'm reading tonight from the Christian Standard Version of the Word of God. But you certainly will note these words. Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Um, the Apostle Paul, uh, being a citizen of Rome, and uh, would be, and his readers would be would be familiar. Um, of this athletic em energy, energy that he is getting and using this metaphor from. Uh, during uh, these times that Paul lived in, uh, the Olympic Games took place and also the Isthmian Games took place. So Paul is telling Timothy here um, that um, as you are competing, as athletes compete, as athlete compete, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. He's comparing the Christian life and the Christian race and the Christian life to that of an athlete. And Paul, again, is getting this from these two games. Uh, the, the Olympic Games uh, were held every four years, and the, and, and the Isthmian Games were held every other year or, or, or every two years. And these, these just to give you some background on it, the type of games um that consisted then that Paul is really focusing on the Ismian games is that of foot races, horse races, chariots, contest, 
They were jumping, wrestling, boxing, and throwing of the discus, and also javelins. And so Paul is looking at all of these things, and uh, certainly the, his, these uh, Timothy would know of this and his readers. And these athletes who um, who played in these games or who got ready for these games, uh, the athletic contest they took back then was very serious. It was very serious. It was so serious that athletes who trained for these games, uh, they, they had to properly prepare for the contest. And it reflected in the Greek rule that they had to swear that they did 10 months of strict preparation before the games. And they had to swear an oath before the statue of the Greek god Zeus and before intestines of a pig that their, that their preparation was done properly. And if it and if it and if they lied, punishment um, it was punishment if one lied. And so these athletes, uh, they that they had to they did t ten months of strict diet preparation, and they had to stand before a statue, a Greek god of Zeus, and before intestines of a, of a, of a pig, and swear that the preparation had been done properly. And so Paul is right; he has all this in mind when he is talking about this verse and the idea. Uh, that again, an athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. And so these rules were twofold. The rules, one aspect involved training for these athletes and keeping the body fit, attaining the necessary skills or speed. And the second centered on lawful competition. Each game or contest had particular rules which helped define the sport and describe proper conduct and etiquette. No athlete was to make up the rules as he went along. If someone broke those rules or ignored them, the officials or judges disqualified them. In the Greek games in particular, the judges were mo most careful about enforcing the rules. Each competitor ha uh, had to be a citizen of his nation with a good reputation. In preparation for the events, he had to follow specific standards. If an athlete was found effective in any manner, he was disqualified com for, from competing. If after he had competed in one, he was found to have broken some rule, then he lost his crown. And these athletes competed for a olive wreath uh, crown. They competed. That's what that uh, that's what the reward was, a crown wreath that that they competed for. And so Paul, all of this is in his mind is circulating. And so he is using all of this background he brings to the text and, 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 and using this metaphor, he states, again, also if anyone competes as an athlete, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. So Timothy is to suffer, of course, in verse 3, share along as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. But not only is Timothy to look and us are to look as being a soldier, but also as an athlete. Christian living requires adherence to certain rules regarding purity, doctrinal orthodoxy, faith, and love. Brothers and sisters, as we, as we look at this metaphor of athlete, these athletes, when they were competing, when they were training, there are some things that they did to help them to succeed. The athletes, when they were training for these Olympic games, no, no, no athlete trained just to train, but they wanted to, they wanted to train to win. And in their training as athletes and what can be applied to us in our Christian lives, how did they, how did they prepare? Well, they were self-controlled. They have self-control, which means they what had discipline. They, they had to self-control. They, 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 they did not allow themselves to wow out. And so we, as our, as a metaphor in our Christian life, as we are athletes uh, in this race, in this Christian life, we also must, must be what? Self-controlled. How can we be self-controlled? Well, we can be self-controlled first in our emotions as Christians, as, a, as, as, as Christians. Um, uh, don't you allow, we shouldn't allow as athletes, don't allow our emotions to control us. We control what? Our emotions. Self-control, brothers and sisters, sometimes, brothers and sisters, making emotional decisions when you are emotional is not the best because your emotions are all what over the place. Um, I like uh, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, <laughs> you know, Satan came to him and after 40 days and 40 nights, he was he was hungered. And uh, the scripture 
<laughs> scripture says, uh, you know, he came to him as weak as I of course. And so, you know, he said, you know, if you be the son of God, you know, command these stones to be made bread and all these temptations. Satan wanted our Lord Christ to make an emotional decision. He wanted him to be out of control, even in the midst of his uh, fat, even midst of fasting at the end of fasting. He's tired. He's weak. He wanted him to make an emotional decision. But yet Jesus depended upon the word and he said, it is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He was what? In what? Self-control. Christ, <laughs> even though the environment around him may have been out of control, he was in the wilderness. I mean, the animals and all of these things around him going on. But yet Satan comes to him, tries to get him out of control. He is yet what? Self-control. That's that's an example of self-controlling our emotions, not allowing them to get the best of us. Is there a particular time that you've ever allowed your emotions to get out of control? I think we all have at one time or another. And sometimes when we've allowed our emotions to get out of control, it was kind of catastrophic. And looking back at the situations, could we have been more in control? Yes, we could have been more in control, but we allowed our emotions to what? And so as that as an athlete was self-controlled and disciplined in what he did, so as athletes in this Christian race, we must always find, try to find ourselves in self-control. And we can be in self-control because we can have self-control because we have the Holy Spirit living within us. That's who gives us our self-control is the Holy Spirit. But not only as athletes or as in this Christian life, as we go forward, or we must be self-controlled in our emotions, we, we also must be self-controlled in our impulses. Uh, 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 stop and think be before you act. Uh, you know, I think so much now we are so impulsive we do things sometimes at the drop of a dime we do things again without thinking we do that and we're so impulsive what, what, whatever feels good we do what, whatever we think is right we, we don't give a second thought we just do it no as athletes in this in in this life as as the athlete was in his training and in his contest we ourselves must be what self control don't 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 jump at the first thing you see don't jump at the first thing that you hear. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, we 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 would do better to just slow down and be self-controlled in our impulses. Arguments happen because of what? Impulses, emotions, blah, 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 back and forth. Husbands and wives sometimes argue out of what? Impulse. Uh children, uh, parents get out of because of what? Impulsive, not stopping and not taking a step back, taking a deep breath, thinking about before you're going to say some of us just act on impulse. And we've been doing it for so long that it's just almost what second nature to some of us. But no, being as an athlete, as these athletes trained and as they were, they were getting fit and as they were trained, you had to be self-controlled. They, 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 they couldn't allow them. They had to remain focused on what they want to do and they're trained on what they do so they could not allow themselves to be out of control in impulses they had to be what self-controlled secondly brothers and sisters not only self-control as this idea of this as, as like these athletes are training and getting ready for their competitions and, and as they do their contest but secondly they also had to have a strict diet they had to have a strict diet they couldn't eat everything as an athlete, as an athlete getting prepared, they couldn't eat everything. They couldn't eat everything. <laughs> Why? Because everything is not what good for you. They couldn't eat everything. So they had strict diets that they had to follow. And as athletes, in, as, as, as is a metaphor that Paul uh, shares with Timothy for us in this Christian life, as their physical diet was strict, so much out, so much, so, so should our spiritual diet be. Uh, uh, it should be strict. Brothers and sisters, don't eat everything that is put before you spiritually. No, no, no. If you want to be a good, if you want to be in top shape, if we want to be good spiritually, we can't, you, you can't eat everything because everything for us that's put out is not good. John, 1 John 4 and 1 says, a beloved, 1 John 4 and 1, uh, it says, a, a, certain, a beloved, you know, try the spirit, by the spirit, certainly, 
to see if that <laughs> spirit is of God. And so, brothers and sisters, we have to we we have to make sure that what comes out is of the word of God. As we grow, as we mature, look, we're going to be presenting. There's a lot of stuff that's presented on TV, through through uh, social media, through different mediums, and everything that comes through shouldn't go into your spiritual diet. You should be strict. It should be only the word of God. In Acts chapter uh, 17 and verse 11, uh, Paul, the the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the apostle Paul was teaching uh, in a synagogue there in Berea. And then it says, I want to read a couple of verses, Acts uh, 17, um, 10 through 11. And as soon as it was night, the brothers and sisters sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. Upon arrival, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. The people here were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, since they received the word with eagerness and examined the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. And so Paul and Silas is, are in the synagogues in Berea, and they these Bereans are hearing what Paul and Silas are saying, but yet they have to go to the scriptures to back up to make sure that Paul and Silas are what lining up again what the script with the word of God. They are what having what a strict diet. They understand uh, that 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 yes, we've heard Paul and Silas or what they said, but we can't swallow everything because possibly everything has been presented to us. I'm sure, Paul and Silas aren't the only ones coming to the synagogue. Uh, teaching. Uh, there are other people teaching, and they're measuring it by what? The word of God. So these Bereans have what? A strict diet of only the word of God. They're going to filter out what's, what's, what's right, and they're going to filter out, guess what? What's wrong? And so as we seek to grow, and as we're athletes in this, in this Christian, in in this life, we must have a strict diet of only the word of God. Even when you read these other religious books, uh, use use your spiritual rate. Take what you can and leave the rest and then filter it through what? The word of God, because a strict diet, and your, your diet must stri be strict and it must be only through and by the word of God. Other other religious books may help. Other You can get little tidbits, but you have to have a strict diet on the word so you can know what to apply, what to accept, and also what to reject. Exactly. And then thirdly, brothers and sisters, in this in this in this uh, idea of an athlete. These these athletes, they were individualized race. They, they were individualized races and e events. Everybody had an everybody did their own event. They were and there was and there was competition among these athletes now, because, again, these were what athletic events, competitions. And so people what they raced against one another. The events were part of they were against one another. But in the Christian life, as we are athletes in this life, uh, we don't compete with one another. We would work all together in the Christian life as we as we promote uh, the Lord's kingdom, as we share the gospel, as we do the work of the Lord. Even though we have individualizes uh, gifts, even though we have individualized races that we all are running individually, there's no competition among us because we are all working together. We are all on the Lord's side. There is no competition uh, in the Lord's house or in the Lord's body. No, 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 no. All the body is what working together. All of us have different, different, different gifts. Uh, uh, the eye is just as important as the hand. The foot can't say that I'm more important than the shoulder. We all work as one, although we are running our individualized races and our individualized events, as it were, in this life. What you go through, I may not go through. What I go through, you may not go through. But we're all going through this thing called life. And so since we are all going through life, we will each have issues that we will have to face. Some things just will fall our lot in this life. Uh, some things you can't pray away. Uh, you can't, uh, you can't, uh, you know, name it and claim it away. Somebody said, well, I'm a, I'm a pray COVID away. Well, good job at that. It's still around here. Some things just fall our lot. Some things we just will fall in our individual races, but it's how we handle what comes what before us. So that's how it is. So we are not in a competition with one another. We're all working together and we want to complete as the athletes did at that time, their individual race and their individual events. 
But then thirdly, we have individualized races that, that we must win and that, and that we want to win and that we want to complete. But the fourth thing that the athletes had to have then, back then, as, in, as we now need spiritually, is stamina. They needed endurance. That, that means that they had to work out. Uh, that means that eat, right? All of that, all of that contributed to their what stamina, all that in what 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 in, it, it 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 helped their what endurance when they worked out uh this diet all goes into what endurance because they needed to get through the events that they were what going through and working through. And brothers and sisters, as they needed stamina going in, we need endurance and spiritual endurance to what? Run our Christian race. And our races, brothers and sisters, that we are winning, again, we've heard it in the past, uh, you know, this is not a sprint. This is what a marathon. And we need spiritual endurance through and by the Holy Spirit. And we get that through and by the study of the word of God, our spiritual endurance through what edification among one another, through the buildup of one another, through the encouragement of one another. It helps us to endure. God's grace helps us endure. God's mercy helps us endure. God's loving kindness helps us endure. We have a combination of things that helps us endure for our stamina. Because some of us have been saved a long time and life has Life has come with blows early on in life. Some of us may be receiving blows right now, and we don't know what's going to come ahead in front of us. So we need the endurance, but we get endurance by exercise, spiritually exercising the word of God, Mem scripture, memorization, prayers, again, edification for one another. All of this helps our endurance. And you know, when you go through things, when you, when, as these athletes went through events and worked through this and working themselves up, it makes you what stronger. It gives you more strength. Strength. It gives you much more energy. Uh, it makes you as it is kind of light on your feet and as as it were. And it helps us endure as we go through this life as 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 athletes in the Lord's service. But not only is there uh, not only must we have self-control among us uh, as athletes, not only must we have a strict diet, spirit, uh, spiritually strict diet, not only must we must uh, thoroughly recognize that we have individualized races and fourthly our stamina uh, that we need uh, fifthly and lastly brothers and sisters uh, as 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 these athletes had uh, they had dedication they were dedicated uh, uh, to their events they were dedicated again to the training uh, which means sacrifice came along with that dedication and sacrifice when these athletes uh, as even as athletes today, they make a, they make huge sacrifices in order to focus their time and dedicate their time according to the event that they are getting prepared to 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 do. And so, as us as athletes in this Christian race, brothers and sisters, we must be what dedicated. That means we have to set our egos aside. Well, that must that means we have to sacrifice for God. And brothers and sisters, sisters following God requires sacrifice as, as, as athletes in this Christian life, we must be dedicated. And dedication, again, calls sacrifices. So that question can, can be applied. What, what have you given up? What are you, what have you given up uh, in, order, in order that God's program may move forward or even in order that you may be all that you've been called to be? Uh, what person have you may had to let go because you, because of your dedication to God and your sacrifice to God, and brothers and sisters, when we sacrifice God in our dedication, not only do we have to give up things, and not only do we have to let people people go sometimes, but also that means we have to set our ego aside. Now, ego sometimes is a hard thing for us to set aside because because of course we 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 you know we want to be. We want to be the person. We want to we want to do our own agenda. We want to do what we want to do. But dedication that these athletes were so dedicated uh, uh, to the event. That's how much we must be as dedicated to the Lord and sacrifice. For, and following God requires sacrifice. Family won't understand. Friends may not understand. Other people uh, who are not saved may not understand. He, sometimes even folk who are saved may not even understand. But you have a dedicated mind that you're going to sacrifice for God. Why? Because his son sacrificed everything for us. So as athletes, are you dedicated to what God has called you to do? Are you, are you dedicated uh, 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 to focus real hard on what he has set before you to do? What are you willing to cut away? What are you willing poss possibly to add in order that you may be dedicated uh, um, uh, in the service of the Lord? 
and brothers and sisters, it's 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 interesting that this that that like this athlete comes in because it was all about training and competition, and it's and it's and it's and it's and it's, and it's, it's a wonder that Paul says this. I want to repeat this. Also, if any competes as an athlete, he is not crowned unless he competes according to, to the rules. I mentioned earlier also with these athletes that if they did not compete according to the rules, they would be what? Disqualified. They would be what? Disqualified. Now, when Paul is talking about this crown, he is talking about rewards. He's not talking about any type of losing salvation or anything. He's talking about rewards. So all of this goes in. We want when 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 we do for the Lord, we want to do we all the rules, all we want to we don't want to go outside the rules. We want to what? We want to stay what? Within the rules. What? Again, purity, doctrinal orthodoxy, faith and love. Outside of that, uh we won't we we may lose our rewards. We want to do everything out of love. We don't want to do nothing strife of vain glory. We don't want to do anything that's not doctrinal. Uh, and again, we want our lives to be pure in the sight of the Lord. And brothers and sisters, as we conclude, brothers and sisters, there's two conclusions that we can take away regarding the Christian life. First, we must understand that the dedicated Christian life consists not in a passive letting go and let God. You've heard that song, right? Let go, let God, let him have his way. No, instead, it requires an earnest consistent striving fueled by the grace of God. It's not a lazy unfair, just let him go and let him have his way. No, no, no. You got to put forth some effort. You got to put forth some, 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 some strain as you have to strive. You have to press self-control. What we mentioned earlier, the self-control and, and strict dieting and spiritualized innovate, innovation, stamina, and dedication. No, 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 no. All of that is striving, again, fueled by the grace of God. And secondly, being disqualified from reward is a real possibility for every believer. Thus, the child of God must be careful to strive according to the rules in order to receive the rewards from the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I want the rewards that the Lord has for me. The Lord has rewards for us, brothers and sisters. But in order for us to get those rewards, we must strive according to the rules, love and faith. And then we must be in shape. We must be in good spiritual shape as these athletes because we want we want all that God has for us, all the rewards that he has for us. We don't want to lose those. We, 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 we don't want to lose them because we were outside bound. But we want to be where God has placed us. And as athletes, brothers and sisters, again, we must have our self-control. We must have a good, strict spiritual diet. We must end, realize that we're in, in, in individualized races, events, but yet we work together. We must have endurance and stamina to get through this life. And we must be dedicated, which calls for sacrifice to God. Amen. Amen. Certainly, I uh, hope, uh, hope on tonight. Certainly, uh, something certainly was, uh, was uh, said, certainly, that will certainly uh, help us as we certainly uh, um, go go forward go forward in the lord amen